That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Halston, the limited five episode series from Ryan Murphy about Halston, which premiered May 14th, 2021 on Netflix. We were going to potentially review this earlier, but it seemed like a daunting task. In general, watching a series, mm -hmm. it's a pretty big commitment. This was, each episode's like 50 minutes, mm -hmm. so it's like four and a half hours. Um, what do you want to say about this before we start? It's very Ryan Murphy. Uh, well, um, I think the main takeaways, so Halston is an American fashion designer mm -hmm. who died in 1990. Um, what I learned from this series is that he was an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> he was best friends with Liza Minnelli. Mm -hmm. He loved prostitutes and cocaine. Mm -hmm. and, and cigarettes. He, and he probably holds the Guinness World Record for smoking the most cigarettes in a lifetime. <laughs> Because that is all Ewan McGregor's <laughs> characterization is doing is smoking a cigarette. Yes. Um, and still had pretty good looking teeth for all of that. Yeah. Okay. I don't really know what I want to say because it, this, this series doesn't do much with the subject. It starts out promisingly enough. I did not realize. I knew who Halston was. There's a 2019 documentary about him from Frederick Cheng. Uh, we also did Dior and I. Uh, which... I'd say you probably should watch instead of this, but if you want to know more about Halston. But it starts off, uh, I guess I forgot about that he designed the hat that JFK's brains were uh, blown onto. Yeah. Um, and uh, it starts kind of there, and then uh, it, the first episode is kind of is promising enough. Well, so the first episode, we get a very short glimpse of him as a child. He was born in 1931, I believe. I'm not sure now. But anyway, we see him as a child and we witness that uh, as a reaction to his mom's sadness because she and her husband would fight, his dad, he would make her hats. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how it's presented. Um, then we see him sort of blow up after um, Kennedy wearing that hat, Jackie O. Uh, then we're introduced to Liza. <laughs> the actor playing Liza, I thought, she was giving me Lady Gaga vibes. She's very Lady Gaga. Krista Rodriguez. But I think, you know, she did... She... The performance of Liza with a Z uh, was entertaining enough. Uh, I almost wish... But, but because they were so intertwined, uh, we get a lot of her and the charm wears off real fast. It does. Um, and then episode one ends with... Halston wanting to build, like, a showroom. So he sort of um, acquires like different team members, one of whom is Joel Schumacher. Mm -hmm. Played by Rory Culkin. Yeah, which was a very, I would actually say that performance was probably one of the better ones. Mm -hmm. um, as sort of like a drug addict, well he was addicted to speed, mm -hmm. among other things I'm assuming. Um, and only lasted for a short while. But yeah, he's a part of the first episode. And, and in real life, I think Schumacher died last year. I want to say. Very, pretty quick. I think in 2019. 2019, okay. Yeah. Okay, episode two, we get into Halston's poor business management. To or his lack of business acumen in general. He doesn't understand that he needs capital to buy uh, supplies to meet the demand. Mm -hmm. Like a very basic business concept that he just cannot grasp and refuses to change how he does business, which is very frustrating to watch. We also then get to see um, that he has a penchant for men of color, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. um, although his one good, because the writing in this, I think, is very crunchy and very like borderline like cheesy soap opera. But I think one scene that works well, the writing, is when Halston meets Ed. The Played by Sullivan Jones. Did you recognize him? No. From The Surrogate. The Jasmine Bachelor. Is oh. When the gay couple that... He's the... The... Yeah. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. I thought that scene worked well because the Ed is saying, like, why, why are you trying to talk to me of all the people in the bar? Why am I black ass? And I thought what Halston says made a lot of sense. And mm -hmm. I thought that was... You know, also, Ewan McGregor's acting is not bad. No, he's good. Yeah. He, he's just... Um, it's It's... A bit one note, especially over five episodes, because we get that it's a front that he's putting on this persona, but we don't ever see the human that's behind no. it, which is the problem. And there's 
which is why I think the first episode does seem to hold promise and it just kind of uh, treads water. Uh, but Ed, uh, there's a scene where he says, oh, you've changed. Like, the, even this voice. But the thing is, I thought Hugh McGregor was doing that voice even before the change Yeah, happened. that's a good point. Like, I, it was pretty one note. But episode two is where it focuses around the Battle of Versailles, which was a fashion show in Paris that was supposed to pit European designers against American designers. And a lot of time is spent with Halston refusing to do it, even though he needs to. Like, for business reasons, publicity, it would make sense. But he refutes, refutes, refutes until the very end. Like, literally hours before he's supposed to go on, he finally kicks it into gear to do it. Which I thought was... It's, he's just a frustrating person. He's a diva. I, I don't, so dramatic. I don't know what voice he's... Because he's from Indiana originally. And I don't know what effect he's trying to do. But all I could think of watching Ewan McGregor was Tallulah Bankhead. Yeah. Which isn't a bad thing. In, episode in two itself. episode two ends with Halston agreeing to sell his business um, to a large corporation. Uh, as in he's going to sell like licensing and get a percentage of the profits, but he will still be like the face, the name, and the designer. To Bill Pullman playing David Mahoney. Yeah. Which also, there's a, again, this character's played so dramatically, or this person, um, but when... Halston is talking to Bill Pullman's character, the person who's offering to like invest in Halston. He he signs this very long, you know, con a contract many pages long, and then after he signs it, he says, "Well, you have to promise me that you will always have my back, that you will always look out for me." And it's like, girl, this is called business. You just signed a contract. You are donezo. Like mm -hmm. what? If it's not in the contract, you're not getting it. Right. Um, episode three revolves around. Oh my god! For me, episode three was all about this perfume and the fragrance mm -hmm. because Vera Farmiga shows up shows up a character named Adele that was so crunchy but sort of like the inspiration for his now famous um, first fragrance bottle that kind of is like a, a teardrop kind of mm -hmm. talking about the inspo for that and how difficult it was to manufacture but it became a huge hit mm -hmm. episode three is also where we're introduced to Victor Hugo mm -hmm. a prostitute slash artist who Halston ends up sharing his life with for a number of years. Played by Gianfranco Rodriguez. Who is just played so over the top. Very broad. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, I don't know who this actor is, but even like his manner of speech just seemed very over the top. He's been in a couple of shorts and things, but this is kind of a major break for him, this role. Okay, I do not recommend this series, but I would say go to episode three, maybe like 20 minutes in. Oh, God. Where <laughs> the, the best part of this series is... Vera Farmiga's character is helping him select his, um, like the notes for his fragrance. So they meet several times, which is so over the top because he's kind of using it as therapy and he's crying because, you know, the olfactory senses are connected to memory and he's recalling these things. And, but at one point she says, the next time you meet me, I want you to do some homework. I want you to bring me three fragrances that inspire you. Mm -hmm. So he brings like an he likes orchids mm -hmm. and initially Vera's character says orchids don't have a smell mm -hmm. but he brings her like this special kind that he likes and they do have a smell and then he brings her this brand of cigarettes he likes that mm -hmm. are soaked in sugar mm -hmm. and then this fool brings her Victor's dirty used jock strap I should have brought a jock strap in here to demonstrate what she did she takes it out of the bag and it just visibly no, she, she She's like, give it to me. And then you, you think she's just going to do a little sniff and she goes... <sighs> yeah. <laughs> like... <laughs> it's pretty good. It, yeah. Um, I hope I can find... Yeah. Oh my God. It, it, go to episode three. Find that clip. But um, it's also in episode three that we get an understanding, which I think is such the... We'll get to it in the end. But anyway, episode three outlines like how he basically attached his name to everything. Rugs, luggage, just all the things. Just selling anything. Selling like uh, flight attendant uniforms. He even made the seats for some airline. Um, and then he starts partying at Studio 54. Mm -hmm. So that's like the end of episode three and the beginning of his habit like his cocaine habit an extreme cocaine habit yes also a very frustrating scene in episode three is so ed is presented as like halston's love interest but then the series does nothing to show how the 
Ed transitioned from being his love interest to being the manager of his like flagship store. Mm -hmm. Like it literally just presumes that we knew that. So then one day Ed comes into Halston's office because now he has this big corporate office and he's like, you won't take my calls. You've changed. Your man, Victor, is coming in dressing up my window displays. And last night he made it like a crime scene. So you need to choose. It's either me or him. And before Ed can even finish what he's saying, Halston says, I choose Victor. Get out. I think we deserved more. We deserved more to understand what Ed's relationship meant to him. I think Halston deserved more based on the series. Well, we'll get to that because I think this is this is not a love letter to Halston. And if he has any loved ones still alive, I'm sure they are not happy with this series. <laughs> well, you know, Murphy always is trying to reclaim difficult people. And sometimes it works. I think he kind of gave us a soft insight to Joan Crawford, at least, in Feud, for mm -hmm. instance. Episode four is... He's in Halston's declining because of his drug use. He's diversified his business endeavors so thinly that he can't really dedicate. What contributed to his downfall is he's he licensed his name out to so many things but refused to let anyone help him. So he would design one thing for you know, one thing for luggage, one mm -hmm. fragrance, and then wouldn't follow up. So then everything kind of plateaued. But um, it's episode four where we just see his. His, his one true love is cocaine. Uh, there's also a scene, which I also thought was... This series does a very good job of making Halston seem like a terrible human being. Mm -hmm. And we get several scenes of them going into Studio 54. And there's this one lady, who to me looks like a young uh, Bette Midler, who keeps trying to get into the club. Mm -hmm. And they deny her. And she shows up wearing Halston, trying to get his attention. Like, please help me get in. And then one night she sneaks in on the night that Liza Minnelli like passed out on the dance floor. The way it's presented here. The way it's presented in the duck in the series. And this poor lady climbs in through like the HVAC like mm -hmm. system and dies. She gets stuck and dies. So when the club closes down and they're, it's, they're like it's raided and they, this body's discovered in the vents. But, uh, and I was reading that there was a body discovered in the vents. It was actually a male whose identity was never... Um, Given to the press. Sure. So they took liberties. Yeah. We also... Uh, there's a character named Elsa who was a model who first started working with... Elsa Peretti. Yes. Mm -hmm. Who ended up becoming a very influential jewelry designer. But she started as a model and Halston had brought her on in um, episode one to help him with his showroom. And they get into a huge fight because she's becoming successful in her own right mm -hmm. outside of Halston because she's designing jewelry for Tiffany and he's just so awful to her. And I just, it was a lot. Because up to that point, it's just we're being bombarded with how, what a terrible person he is. It was a lot. And it, it so clunkily tried the series to present her devotion to him. There's a really odd sequence where she basically proposes marriage to him. That's right. That, it, 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 even where it's placed in there is so odd and clunky. And I think that was them trying to set up to, to make this more, uh, in the words of Reby Jackson, more devastational. Uh, oh, Reby. Today's <laughs> Janet Jackson's birthday. That's true. Uh, <laughs> but but it, it just doesn't work. It just, it, it makes, they paint even Peretti as kind of an idiot. For, for I think they had to paint it in a lot of holes and they didn't do a good job of doing no. it. No. Then right after that fight, we see that Halston's mom dies, which was a really frustrating it's like we get all these flashbacks of the same sort of scene of Halston with his mom and like how apparently like he made her happy, but then the kid playing him doesn't look happy. So it's a very confusing, he says he had a great childhood, but that's not true because he watched his mom get beat and his dad was awful to him. But anyway, his mom dies and it's like, we're in the end of like the fourth episode and we get no understanding of his relationship with his mom after the age of like six years old up until she's dead in the casket. Mm -hmm. I thought that was so strange. Like we keep flashing back, we keep like flashing back to her. Why didn't we get anything? Like, was she proud of him as he got older? Like nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Um, again, you know, he created this, what I'm assuming what he thought was a fabulous persona of an artiste and it's extremely grating to behold. One scene that I thought felt like, you know, like when you write, it's like if I had to write a, 
a biopic about Michael Jackson. I'm going to throw in some of the more like, he tried to buy the elephant man's bones and he, you know, those stupid things. I feel like because Halston doesn't have those like sort of iconic crazy moments, they threw in, there's a scene where Halston's phone isn't working. Mm -hmm. So like his assistant, Joe, his longtime like David collaborator, his, his illustrator, his illustrator and collaborator, you know, calls in like a maintenance person to check his phone and they find out that the phone's not working because he's, it's like an old school landline that because Halston does so much cocaine, it like drips from his nose into the receiver. And oxidize the... Uh, and like literally when they open it up, like a bunch of cocaine falls out. I just thought that was so corny. Like this is what you want to do with this like... I mean, he's a fashion icon and it, we can get into it. But anyway, it goes into Liza Minnelli going into rehab. Then we see that because of money issues and having to... Because he's spending more money than he should and the business is not making money. His main investor, the people who own his name, say we're going to collaborate with JCPenney. So then we get, you know, a little bit of how disgusted he is by that, but that he has to do it. And that's when we see his spirit just leave him. Mm -hmm. Like his motivation to be a designer leaves him. And then the final scene of episode four is him selling his business but not realizing that he sold his name which is oh he's so bad at business that i almost feel like we no i do feel like we need an understanding of how this person was even able to function mm -hmm. because he just makes the worst decisions so haphazardly they offer him an amazing deal like we'll let you keep part of your business you just have to work 10 days a year and then somehow he ends up screwing that up to sell everything in his name and only get paid like a million dollars a year, plus a large lump sum. But he gave up Halston. And I think that the feelings that are evoked by that are nothing because he's just a fool. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the final episode. So Victor, his little prostitute boyfriend artist, is you know present throughout. But things have gotten bad because Victor is out here. Well, Victor finds out he's HIV positive. And he's a drug addict and he is trying to blackmail Halston by saying, if you don't give me a million dollars and buy me a studio like um, Warhol, I'm going to leak these X rated sex tapes we've made um, to the press. So Halston gets like beats up Victor and then he leaves. But ultimately he starts blackmailing him and Halston has to pay him off. Um, then because Halston's not doing his job at his work, the company that owns him hire like a designer to basically fill in, mm -hmm. which was like, whatever. Mm -hmm. Then Halston finds out he has HIV. Then he realizes that he doesn't have anything to do because he, he sold off his name. So he can't work under his, like he can't do anything basically. So he decides to help out. He's good friends with Martha Graham. Mm -hmm. So he helps her design costumes for a production she's putting on Persephone, Persephone. And, and that is his redemption in the press. <laughs> okay. And that's it. The film ends with him. He, and, he spent the last years of his life, like the last year and a half um, on the West Coast. Um, I read that he actually spent it with family in San Francisco, but the film says he spent it driving up and down the West Coast. So we see him driving up like PCH mm -hmm. in a Rolls Royce, looking off into the distance. And his final memory that we see is like all of his designs on the runway. That's it. Yeah. All right. Um, I appreciate uh, recuperating queer history. Uh, and Halston, of course, is an important part of that. Uh, I, I just think that ultimately this kind of does a disservice. Like, I don't dislike all of Ryan Murphy's productions. It's just that the nostalgia porn of it all sometimes negates the the effect of it and it almost makes me want to be like let's live in the present and the future with you like <laughs> so tired of when i think about like the assassination of gianni versace and which people versus oj it's like the the subject matter is just um riveting on its own it's riveting on its own you can't mess it up but then like to vilify these people is okay because they did bad things like andrew cunanan who's the focus of the versace one he is a murderer a serial killer but he also paint is allowed like with crawford paints a sympathetic side of cunanan yes he humanizes yes. him which he doesn't do with halston right that's what i'm getting to is i think that it was more palatable well it was better done in those two but i think it's more palatable 
because they are. I, I just don't understand like why take a figure like Halston, who's not a villain, he's just a shitty business person and an asshole. Why why choose to do this and then just well, maybe he sh- it's like he shouldn't be the story. It's like in 2014, there were, yes. two, there were two Yves Saint Laurent, Yves Saint Laurent biopics, uh, one approved by the state and one not, the Bertrand Bonello one. And both of those, I thought, were kind of dull films because as a subject himself, uh, Saint Laurent wasn't that interesting. What I want to propose to Ryan Murphy, or what he should have done, is he should have done a series about like American designers. And then Halston would have been one episode. Yeah. Because there's not much to him except he was a stupid businessman. And then the rest of the shit was just, he's just your average gay guy in the 80s, like well, being slutty and on drugs. Like, I don't understand. I'd be curious to read actually what this is based on, Simply Halston by Stephen Gaines, because I... Oh, I should take that back. I don't think all gay men in the 80s were slutty and on drugs, because I'm sure someone will comment about that. <laughs> I just meant the depiction of gay men in the 80s in New York City. That's how he's presented here, so we don't need five episodes... Right. Anyway, I want to say there's probably more substance to him yes, maybe in that I'm novel. Sure. But uh, how even the world is created, like HIV is, of course, happening. And it's kind of like, well, they, no one actually has a conversation about it, no. except unless they're getting a diagnosis. And how Studio 54 is depicted, too, also is very low key. Like It's just like this club that they like to go to that they were sad about closing. Um, I, I thought there was more... Uh, ingenuity with how they presented poppers in Studio 54. I watched a review about this series and the lady talking about it was just going on and on about how like X-rated it is and I think it I, I there are two scenes where we see You get to see Sullivan Jones' derriere that's all I remember and then we see someone like, maybe maybe uh, we see Huston Rod- bent over getting Rod- pounded Rodriguez's gut uh, behind as well. Yeah, but I mean the sex acts aren't very sexy and they're not long, so I don't know. I don't think it's X-rated. Um, tell this. Tell her to go see Equation to an Unknown. Oh God. But yeah, I was very disappointed with this. I would not recommend watching it. I do feel like I wasted four and a half hours. I do too. It's it's too long uh, for what it's accomplishing. I do like Ewan McGregor. I, again, I don't mind that he's playing a gay character. I know he had to come out. Uh, in, in defense of that as well. Um, but, you know, I'd, I'd rather rewatch I Love You, Philip Morris. What would you give this series? Um, oh, and I wanted to add that I know that's already been done cinematically in Big Fish, but God, he's starting to look like Albert Finney with that dyed hair in this, at least. Uh, I would give this two out of five. I would give it two out of five. Anything else? Mm-mm. Bye. Bye.